people of the internet, my name is Johnny, welcome back to yet another FNAF news video. The other day, fellow FNAF tuber and fellow John on the channel FNAF hosted an interview with Steel Wool Studios. It was a very lovely hour and 20 minute long interview with Jason, and of course, in the interview they revealed a whole bunch of info and behind the scenes on what they're working on. So for today's FNAF news video, I gathered over 30 answers from JTOP that I thought were very interesting. So because there is so much to cover, let's not waste any more time. I will, of course, leave the full interview, which I highly recommend watching, linked down below. So if you're excited for the future of FNAF and whatever Steel Wolf's cooking up, scroll down, tickle that subscribe button. We're almost to 100,000 subscribers. But before we get into any specific game answers, let's touch upon some general basic answers from Jason. The first one being that Jason's favorite FNAF game by Scott is Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria Simulator, mainly because of its sense of humor, which makes sense. That's probably why Steel Will loves using Helpy so much. It was actually Scott who came up with the titles for Curse of Dreadbear, Security Breach, and Ruin. With the rise of Frank and Freddy being the working title for Dreadbear, and Jason revealing that over 50 different names were being thrown around for Security Breach. Steel Will defines their style of games as grimsical, a mix of grim and whimsical being funny yet dark. With Jason saying that Freddy's fits that tone exactly, claiming that they never make anything that's over the top of blood and that a mix of horror games like Ruin and fun titles akin to Help Wanted 2 are Jason's favorite to make. Every detail in the games gets reviewed to avoid misleading or sending the wrong message to fans. There are specific details that come from the script that must be added and are intended for specific scenes or locations from the beginning. Jason revealing that the use of colors in specific areas often gets addressed to not leave an unintended impression. And lastly, for general questions, Steer will quote, absolutely watches FNAF speedruns to locate and correct any bugs in their games. However, there are certain instances in which the team purposely leave glitches unresolved for speedrunners because they serve such an improbable chance of affecting traditional playthroughs. But moving on now to Help Wanted, which was actually Steel Wool's very first FNAF game, Jason revealed a bit of backstory behind the development of Help Wanted 1, revealing that only seven people were working on the game when development started, and development ended with around 11 people working on the title. With the game starting out as just FNAF 1 in VR, but then Sewell suggested adapting FNAF 2 and FNAF 3, and then exploring FNAF 4 experiences without having them so tied into sound like the original FNAF 4. We've heard that backstory with Help Wanted before that it was just meant to be FNAF 1 in VR, but then they kept building and building up the game, which Honestly, I'm super thankful for. Help Wanted 1 and also Help Wanted 2 are some of my favorite FNAF games. They're just so fun to play and I'm super happy they didn't just do FNAF 1. Moving on now to Security Breach. Development started right before COVID with around 12 to 20 people working on the game in person. Jason and Evan Lampy, who is a creative director at Steel Wool Studios, always knew they wanted to do the Pizzaplex and were talking with Scott after Help Wanted 1 about developing a big non-VR game. Jason and Evan then and planned out all the locations and attractions the Pizzaplex would have, revealing that Chica's Mazer size area was originally going to be a mirror maze. However, while building sets and models during pre-production, the COVID-19 pandemic forced the studio to continue work remotely at home. Jason following up that statement, revealing that Steel Wolf still works 100% remotely, though of course they've since honed the skill to work long distance. When asked how they would implement what they learned from Security Breach into future games, Jason replied that all department leads now meet in person to make sure everyone's on the same page. With everyone showing day-long presentations of what they're working on during pre-production and the story up until that point. Noting that getting everyone involved in a fun in-person kickoff is very important. I think there's many things Steel can take away from working on Security Breach and even Jason said in the interview, people would be surprised what exactly they did take away from making that game. But I'd say that point, making sure that everyone's on the same page and making sure everyone Everyone's meeting in person and showing off what they're working on. That's a good thing to take away, absolutely. Continuing on, a main appeal when developing Security Breach was capturing the heyday of the Pizzaplex. A snippet in time when the animatronics are still polished and the attractions bustling and in pristine condition. And then, Ruin would act as the flip side where the characters are creepy and broken down inside a desolate and dilapidated Pizzaplex. We're gonna touch upon Ruin a bit more in a quick second in the actual Ruin section of the answers, but I just wanna say I think they did a fantastic 
fantastic job with that flip side of Security Breach being the happy fun area and then Ruin being the creepy destroyed pizza plex. They just captured that juxtaposition so well with the atmosphere and the design of the characters and the locations. But moving on now to a question that I much anticipated, I believe it was in the Game Jolt interview with Steelwall after the release of Security Breach, but Brian Fryermuth, who was the design director at Steel Wool, said that he had a favorite easter egg in Security Breach that no one had found yet. And in John's interview, we actually found out what that easter egg was. And it turns out we actually found it, we just weren't really talking about it the way they intended. With the easter egg turning out to be some of the parts and props in the sewers as well as the notes in the staff bot silo, there were just certain aspects of those locations and details that fans apparently weren't commenting on until much later. With Jason saying that John actually did a good job touching upon those discussion points, so yeah, we did actually find the easter egg. Even when they said we didn't find the easter egg, we just, we found it, we just weren't talking about it, so kind of a debate there. But continuing on, Jason says that there are quote, for sure mysteries in Security Breach that have still not been solved yet. Clarifying that there are aspects that maybe haven't been paid off yet and may happen in the future that'll make sense. So basically, we will eventually get answers in presumably future games, maybe books, other forms of media. Two questions we still have from Security Breach, so even though they're unsolved right now, seems like they may get solved eventually with future information. However, Jason also believes that there will forever be mysteries with Security Breach, claiming that you can come up with questions about everything in the world and that there are so many possible questions you may never have the answer to. And lastly, when asked if he could change anything about Security Breach, Jason ultimately answered with, you can't make everyone happy, and when you go back and change things, you don't know what the ripple effect is going to be. But now let's move on to Ruin the deal. DLC for Security Breach. Steelwall always knew they wanted to do DLC with Security Breach and WoW Ruin specifically quote evolved, they knew that the story didn't end at the main game. Jason also described Cassie as a healer in Ruin, with her natural inclination being to help the animatronics. Cassie puts herself in danger to help out her friend and is able to fix Roxanne with her security node, and even reunite Chica with her voice box, with Jason actually revealing that that moment with Chica was planned from the early stages, and that it was added so the player felt a payoff of hearing Chica speak once again after losing her voice box to Gregory. When Ruin released, a lot of people were speculating whether that was for a scrapped ending that would actually save all of the Glamrock animatronics. Turns out the explanation is a lot simpler, it's just to make the player feel good about helping out Chica. Foxy's abandoned log ride is Jason's favorite area in Ruin, noting how exciting it was to explore and reveal other attractions that were inaccessible in the main game. The Mexus machine at the end of Ruin is quote, deliberately supposed to be an older machine, with the Whopper machine from 1983's War Game serving as Steel Wool's reference for what a supercomputer during the time period they had in mind would look like. Now there is a lot to pick apart in that statement, the fact that that machine is specifically deliberately supposed to be an older machine, that's gonna lead to a lot of theories of why exactly it's still here, why exactly the Mexus entity is inside of it, has it been in there the whole time, was the machine repurposed to be for Mexus? I was not expecting any lore drops, let alone something as big as that in this interview, but I'd love to know what are your thoughts and theories, why do you think that machine is supposed to look as old as it does? And lastly, for Ruin, Eclipse's happy birthday line in Ruin is a reference to how Frosty the Snowman delivers the line whenever he comes to life. Happy birthday! Happy birthday! And now let's move on to Help Wanted 2, the latest FNAF game by Steel Wool. After determining Help Wanted would be receiving a sequel, Jason spent the first weekend creating a list of mini games they didn't use in the first Help Wanted, stuff the team would like to do, characters we didn't see, and characters they'd like to show more of. Jason also revealed that there were a lot of mini games they didn't finish or didn't do completely that may come back someday. That is just the first of quite a few hints that there might be more Help Wanted levels to come in the future 
future. Maybe not for a Help Wanted 3 necessarily, but at least most likely for a DLC, which is something that has seemingly been in the works for quite a few months now. So I'd say it's extremely likely more levels for Help Wanted 2 are going to be coming at some point in the future. But moving on, for Help Wanted 2's development, almost the entire studio was split into pods to work on different levels and aspects of the game. Every pod gave themselves a name and a logo, with one of these groups being called the Anxious Axolotls, which is actually the name of an arcade machine you can spot in the game. Next up, Help Wanted 2 was completely made from the first Concept 2 released product in 2023, meaning that the entire game from conception to released finished product was made in just under one year, which is crazy. The food prep minigames in Help Wanted 2 were Jason's favorite to play whenever a new build was developed. He also said that he would love an endless mode of those food prep minigames. So again, hopefully if they do an update or DLC to Help Wanted 2, they can add some form of endless mode for those food prep games, because, I mean, even if the devs want it, I bet a lot of fans would love that as well. This one's pretty sad. The team made it a point to make sure Helpy screams during the first aid minigames really sounded like he was in pain, with the original scream being adjusted to sound worse for the player to hear. Help Wanted 2 was made to be as replayable as possible, with different food items, musical patterns, voice lines, and so much more created so that each round in a minigame felt unique when replaying it. And again, that's an aspect of Help Wanted 2 they just captured so, so well. The concept of Princess Quest 4 taking place in VR was pitched early on in Help Wanted 2's development to address some, quote, unsolved issues with Princess Quest as a whole. And actually, back during Help Wanted 1, Stewell created an image of a giant glitch trap in a glitchy purple space, holding a tiny vanny in his hand. And at the start of Security Breach, Stewell wanted to create a VR experience where the player is in that glitchy space as Vanny in the palm of Glitch Trap. The idea was later repurposed into a Help Wanted 2 ending, featuring a giant Vanny squashing a tiny Glitch Trap in her hands, with Jason seemingly confirming that that was indeed the end of Glitch Trap. Turning yeah. around and yep. being, this is, this is, you know, the end of Glitch Trap. Yeah. So it is the end of Glitch Trap. Squished. Gone. Yep. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> the broken English spoken by the old man in Princess Quest 4 is intentional and is, quote, exactly the wording desired by Jason, with those grammatical errors being a callback to old NES games, such as the original Legend of Zelda's typo of master using it and you can have this. Jason says that there are little bits of Zelda in Princess Quest and that's how he felt like that video game character would speak. But going back to some more scrapped Help Wanted 2 levels, a VR version of Monty Golf was specifically considered for Help Wanted 2, but it didn't make the final game roster because Steelwolf felt they had accomplished all they wanted with Monty Golf and all of its courses in Security Breach and Ruin. Instead, the team thought it would be best to focus on bringing the previously scrapped Bonnie Bowl game to VR rather than repeating another Monty Golf title. With Jason following up that statement revealing that there were other mini games that were left out of Help Wanted 2. Not because they were necessarily cut, but rather because they didn't fit at that time. Once again saying that someday they might go back and do some of those other games. So once again, it seems like Sewell has some desire to do more Help Wanted mini games, probably in the form of DLC, which hopefully gets revealed at some point soon. There's clearly a lot of teasing in this interview, and again, it seems like that's been in development for a few months now. But lastly, for Help Wanted 2 answers, this one's just a bit of a fun one. One of the bits of feedback from Help Wanted 1 was that the game was too intense and scary. So when discussing game types for Help Wanted 2, the team used a ranking system consisting of images of the crying child to gauge how intense a level was. Again, I just thought that was kind of funny. It's an interesting ranking system. Maybe we're gonna have to start using that in the FNAF community for how scary different FNAF games are. But moving on to the final section of answers, let's talk about the future of Steel Wool and the future of their games. My first note for this section is Blood just randomly said there are still more games to come. Nobody's ever gonna figure out everything. Right, exactly. It's, yeah, exactly. There's no way. Right. Yeah. Wow. So, like, like, there's still more games to come. So, is there? Anyways, um, with Jason going on to say that it's no secret that they love working with Scott and that Steerwell will continue to work with him, which I feel like is just obvious. You know, even if there is no official confirmation of a brand new Steerwell FNAF game right now, 
they've got a very good relationship, Scott Games and Steel Wool, especially with Ruin and Help Wanted 2 bringing back support to Steel Wool because with Security Breach, there was a lot of people out to get the company. But I think they've really brought back excitement and support for their studio, so... Again, it seems like it's a no-brainer they're gonna keep working on FNAF games. And when asked if we'd ever see the Pizzaplex in a functional state again, Jason expressed that he would love to see the exterior and where the Pizzaplex is located, saying that there are so many unanswered questions and ultimately that, and I quote, no location is off limits. Everything in Scott's universe could be revisited at some point. Not everything is answered. There's so much stuff that you could go back and look into. I thought it was super interesting that in a Pizza Plex specific question, Jason answering that not only would they like to see the outside of the Pizza Plex, but also other locations in Scott's universe are also on the table. Now, of course, this isn't necessarily confirming the Pizza Plex is coming back in a future game, just that Jason would like to see where it's located, the outside of the area. But I just thought it was super fascinating that, again, he brought in other locations from the FNAF universe. Not only is the Pizza Plex not off limits, every other location in Scott's universe is on the table that we could revisit. That just really opens the door for so many locations to revisit. Visit. I'd love to know if you could see Steel Wool touch upon any FNAF location, what would you like to see them tackle? When asked if there was anything they could tease about future Steel Wool FNAF projects, Jason replied with, quote, I would say that Steel Wool is going strong. We've got like 90 people and we're not letting anyone go, which means we have work for 90 people. Two things, number one, it's super exciting to hear that they still have so much going on at Steel Wool, and number two, it's amazing to hear they're not letting anyone go. Unfortunately, in the last year in the gaming industry, a lot of studios and companies have been letting employees go left and right. So those two things are just great to hear, they've got more work, and they're sticking with all their employees. When asked how long FNAF would last, Jason replied with, quote, as it remains healthy and fun and engaging for everyone, I think that it's just just gonna keep going, which is amazing to hear, of course. And the final answer I'd like to go over with all of you is Jason's answer to if Steel has anything planned for the 10th anniversary of FNAF coming up in August. Because Jason claimed that he'd be celebrating the anniversary with carrot cake, which as I'm sure we all know and as Jason made sure to point out in the interview, is Cassie's favorite flavor of cake. Now that is where they left that answer, we do not know exactly why, Blood's talking about eating carrot cake. The obvious answer is that whatever they're cooking up involves Cassie in some way, shape, or form. Whether we'll see the announcement of the continuation of Cassie's story from Ruin on the anniversary, or maybe we'll just get some simple art of Cassie and the characters enjoying some carrot cake like Stuel likes to do for their game anniversaries. But whatever they're cooking up, I guess we'll find out pretty soon. The anniversary is only two months away now. We're getting awfully close. So I'd love to know what are your thoughts and theories for everything revealed in this interview. Again, the full thing is linked down below. Please go show it some support. A massive shout out and congrats to John for actually hosting this interview. That is an insane accomplishment. But thank you all so much for watching this video and I'll see you all on the flip side. Goodbye.